Mossad is sometimes referred to as the world's most feared intelligence agency, and it's been blamed for a series of brazen operations through the Middle East in the past year. The pager attacks in Lebanon, the assassination of Hamas's Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran, the assassination of Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah in Beirut. In recent years, its reputation for ruthlessness seems to have eclipsed even the CIA. Analysts say each of these operations show just how deep Mossad can reach right into the inner circles of its enemies. Of course, we don't know even a fraction of what the Mossad gets up to. That's the point. But we do know some things. We know Mossad's chief reports directly to the Prime Minister. We know the Prime Minister needs to approve every assassination order. We also know that an assassination order is called a red page and Mossad has issued quite a number of those. So how did Israel cultivate its organization of espionage? Mossad was set up in 1949, just a year after the creation of the State of Israel. At this point, Zionist forces had made quite a few enemies because they'd violently expelled Palestinians from their homes and then declared a state on the territory they took. This was back before Israel's peace treaties with Egypt and Jordan, and a lot of the Mossad's focus was on sabotaging Israel's neighbors. One of the most notable campaigns was Operation Damocles. In 1962, Israeli agents launched a wave of bombings, abductions, and violent threats against the West German scientists who were helping Egypt develop its missile industry. Mossad also kidnapped and assassinated at least one person. And the curious bit here is they got a former Nazi SS officer to do it. That brings me to the other reason some in Israel wanted such a ruthless spy agency, the Holocaust. Many of the people responsible for the mass murder of six million Jews during World War II were still at large. Now, Israel is open about how its agents flouted the sovereignty and laws of different countries through bombings, attempted kidnappings and killings in their hunt for war criminals. Criminals like Adolf Eichmann, who organized the mass deportation of Jews to death camps. And he was never remorseful. In 1960, Mossad found out he'd fled to Argentina like many other Nazis. They tracked him down, living under the alias Ricardo Clement. As Eichmann got off a public bus on his way home from work, agents kidnapped him. He was taken to Israel, put on trial and executed. But Mossad only managed to track down three of 11 high profile Nazi targets on its hit list. A decade later though, it was faced with a much more immediate and public challenge. It was the Munich Olympics 1972. Palestinian fighters from a group known as Black September stormed the athletes' village killed two Israelis and took another nine as hostages. West German police completely botched the rescue operation and all the hostages were killed. Israel's prime minister tasked the Mossad with tracking down those linked to Black September in an operation codenamed Wrath of God. From Rome to Paris to Lebanon, Mossad agents tracked down and killed at least seven suspects. But Mossad had received warnings about Black September before the Olympics and ignored them. And then while hunting a suspect in Norway, agents killed the wrong man in front of his pregnant wife. They got caught and went to prison before being pardoned. Mossad had another blunder in 1997 when its agents got caught trying to kill Hamas's then political chief, Khaled Michel in Jordan at the request of Benjamin Netanyahu. This time, the US had to bail out the failed assassins. Mossad eventually did kill a Hamas commander, but were caught on camera. Mahmoud al Mahbou had a red page for kidnapping and killing two Israeli soldiers. Here he is in a Dubai hotel, and those two tennis aficionados behind him are suspected Mossad agents. He was found dead in his hotel room only hours later. But the agents used forged foreign passports, which created diplomatic crises with five countries, not least of all the UAE. And Dubai's police followed the trail all the way back to Tel Aviv. It was around this time that Mossad also started to focus on Iran. Between 2010 and 2021, it killed at least five Iranian scientists or military figures inside the country including 
senior nuclear physicist Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, who was shot by a remote control machine gun mounted on a pickup truck. Mossad and its friends at the CIA are also suspected of involvement in a series of mysterious explosions at major infrastructure sites and a missile factory, and are blamed for introducing the Stutnex malware to sabotage Iran's nuclear program. Iran and its allies are still the Mossad's main focus. We saw that with the killing of Haniya in Tehran and the attacks on Hezbollah and Nasrallah. The problem with spying and sabotage is that success for one side often means carnage for another. And in the context of the current Middle East, this sabotage can often lead to unimaginable consequences.